right now focus more on the audio. For... Okay, so again, uh, we have one more chapter left, which is chapter 11. So uh, what will happen as we are saying, uh, the book is only 13 chapters, we start from 7 to 13. But I'm saying that we're going to finish by next week. Uh, so far we did chapter 7, which is object oriented programming. 8 was a ray. 9 was inheritance. 10 was polymorphism. 11 is what is left, which is exception. After this, we're going to cover and then we just talk about the exception. 12 is recursion. And this is the last chapter. The reason I'm recording this uh, lecture is very simple. It's because this is a data structure class. So I'm not recording for nobody here. I record it for myself. I have a data structure class in YouTube, which I want to view the video. So that's why I'm making the recording. It's not any big deal or something. Hopefully, okay, after this subject, I'm not going to break it no more. So I have the I have the slides here. And I think it should be the modules. And we have three slides. The textbook slides cover almost everything. The textbook slides cover everything. These are the Java, we call these the Java collections. We have star Q, link list, trace, and also class. And the first thing I'll go through is what is a Java collection. So we can say that the Java collection is a data structure. And what is a data structure is how we organize our data. How data is organized. Again, how data is organized. So we we'll say how data is organized in computer system. I'll say in the computer system. The good news is that Java have a built-in data structure already. So we have what we call the stack queue, link list, trace, graph. Everything is in Java. You don't need to write the code, nothing. And in order to use any of this data structure in Java, all you need to do is import the Java utility package. So just import the utility package. And you can use all these data structures. Today we will try our best to cover at least stack and queue. Then hopefully this Thursday we cover the rest. So what will happen in the, uh, the quiz three is that we're going to have searching and sorting algorithm. We cover it already. And also stack and queue and link list. I put a star here in case we can't finish by Thursday. If we can finish the trace and graphs by Thursday, then we're going to have everything in the quiz on Thursday. So if we can. So we can start now. We start with the stack first. So what is a stack? Again, stack is a data structure which normally organize as last in, first out. So the best way to explain stack is that, first of all, it's a list of homogeneous elements. So what can tell us what is a, a list of homogeneous elements in terms of computer science? If we say a list of homogeneous, uh, same type of object. Yeah, so the same type of uh, items. So this means if I have a stack, and I decided to put values inside, it have to be only values. If I have a stack and I put characters, then it have to be only characters. So again, it's a list of the, the items in the stack have to be the same data type. Uh, the trick here, actually, I'll use the diagram to go through this. So this is a stack of items. Uh, in the real world, I may have a stack of books. Uh, I have a chemistry, English, Java programming, 
world history, and primary. Now, if I want to take a Java programming out, what I need to do first, I have to take the two books at the top. So I need to take the prime math out first. I take the world history. If I can take Java program textbook. Now, which book I put last? Of course, they're at the top. So that's why the start we say the data structure is last in, first out. So the last item you put in the start, let's say again the textbook. The last item I put on the stack will be the first item I will take out. So who can tell us what we can use the stack for? To write a very nice program. I think the easy program now I can do with stack if I no stack is to reverse uh, any item. Let's say I want to reverse uh, strings or actually I will use this as an example. Let's say I have CHA. When I have CHA, the first item I will push will be the first, uh, C, second will be H, third will be A. Now, when I pop it out, what will come out first? A, H, C. So we can use a start to reverse anything. So now instead of using a for loop, uh, find CHAR80 method to compare them, now we don't need to compare any items no more. Just put everything out there and take it out. So that's the, the main concept of the, the stack. Uh, again, it's an homogeneous element. Computer use stack to implement a method calls. And uh, this will be in the, uh, let's say, the IDE uh, compiler, etc. Also, we can use the stack to compare recursive algorithms to non recursive algorithms. So those are, again, the two major examples to give us here. But we have so many examples. For example, if I want to write, uh, actually, we wrote this program before, it's palindrome. If I want to write a program that the other a value or a test is a palindrome, which means if I have one, two, one, this is palindrome. I read it forward or uh, backward, it's the same. Or if I have a test more, this is palindrome also. So, what I can do? I don't need to write all the long code no more. All I need to do is create a stack, push all the items into the stack, and remove all the items from the stack. Then compare if the two strings are the same. Yeah, this is not palindrome. Why? When I put it in, I get CHA. When I take it, I get AHC. So it's not a palindrome. So we can use a stack to do a lot of things, uh, whereby we don't need to write the, the code no more. So these are some of the operations we can do on stack. Uh, we can push an item. Uh, pushing an item means we are inserting an item into the stack. Uh, we can also remove an item, which is pop. I'm taking it out. Then we can also pick. Pick means I want to see what is on top of the stack. And also we can check if the stack is empty or if there's no space in the stack. So this is another, another, again, this is something, uh, this slice is not from the textbook. Uh, the textbook slice, we may go through that one later, okay, by next week. The reason why I chose this slide because we can see the code, all the code I use, so we can see how it works. So the first thing I do here is, push, uh, first of all, I have empty stack. There's not, the first operation is to push um, A or box A. So this means we have box A at the top. The next time I push box B, now box B will be at the top. Next time I push box C, C will be at the top. If I want to remove A, it means I have to remove C and also B before I can get to A. Uh, the next step we did, we did a pick. Pick means I don't take anything, I don't put anything, just to see what is on the top. So we can see that we have three items, the same item. Uh, after we push box C, we still have the same three items. So next we push D, so we have four items now. Next we pop C, uh, item. When we pop, the top will go out. Uh, so it left to three. So that's, again, this is the whole concept. When we push, we're adding one? When we push? Yeah, we're adding one. Yeah, we're adding more item. So push means putting yeah. an item inside. Pop means removing an item. Pick means we just want to check what is on top of the stack. Checking what is on the top.
So we can go through the stack ADT. Uh, so the major sales operations is given to us here. Initializing the stack means we want to make sure there's nothing in the stack after we use it finish. This empty stack means we want to check if the stack is empty. Who can tell us what operation we have to do? This is a re-implementation. So when do we need to check if a stack is empty? Just looking at the operation, we have a push, we have pop, we have pick. So when I'll check if it's empty. When we are popping, because you don't want to pop, uh, for example, if my stack is empty, if my stack is empty, I cannot pop empty stack. So I have to check if it's empty. If it's empty, I cannot pop. Now, uh, if my stack is, is full, there's no space. It means what? I cannot push an item. We cannot put an item inside. So again, those are the operations. We check, anytime we are, we are trying to remove an item, let's check and make sure there's nothing inside. Anytime we are again pushing, let's make sure there's a space inside. So we have both of them. Check if it's empty or check if it's again full. Then the push, pick, and also pop. So those are the, again the six major operations. Now a time will come, we don't need to check if there's a space. And that's, that's what we take it to what we call the link list. Please uh, make sure you go through the slides, the chapter 13 slides, they cover everything in one slice. So link list, we call it dynamic implementation. Dynamic means what? We don't know the size. During the running time, the program will allocate memory space. So in that case, we don't need to check whether there's a space or not. So, those are the exception. Uh, hopefully, everybody know what is an exception. Or in short, exception is an error. Exception is an error. So we just said that if we want to pop, we have to check if the stack is not empty. Otherwise, we are going to have what we call underflow. Underflow exception means we are trying to remove something and there's nothing inside. Overflow means you try to push an item or you want to put an item in but there's no space. So those are the two main exceptions or the two main errors in the stack operation, either overflow or underflow. And we may go through this in chapter, I think chapter 11, when we talk about runtime run exception, it's a built-in exception in Java ID, uh, Java system. So what they did here is that they create a stack exception inheriting runtime exception. So we are using the runtime exception for both our overflow exception if the stack there's no space and we try to put an item or underflow exception if there's nothing but we try to remove something. So underflow means popping operation, overflow means pushing operation. So here we are going to do the implementation of stack as a array. And the most important thing we should know here is the stack top. And I may explain it first. Uh, let's so this is my stack. Now we are doing array implementation. So this is our index. I'll say from zero, uh, four is okay for now. Uh, so again, if I have an empty stack, it means the stack top will be zero. We assign zero to it, there's nothing inside. When I push one item, the stack top will be one. When I push another item, the stack top will be two. So the stack top here is a very important variable for our code. Uh, stack top will keep track of what, how many items we have in the, in the stack. Here, if it's two, this I have two items. Now, if I want to pop an item, what I will do? The algorithm. Uh, let's write the algorithm here. Please, 
Make sure you understand the algorithm so that when we go through the coding, you will see the step is the same as the algorithm to be the same. So if I want to pop an item, the first thing I'll do, I'll check if the stack is empty. So the top, the stack top is actually from the bottom? No, the stack top is uh, it's a variable that will keep track of all the items in it. So right now the stack top is on here. I just, let's go to two more items here. And in the beginning, the stack top always starts at zero. I think that's yeah, the stack top zero means there's nothing inside. So, for example, right now the stack top will be five. So, the stack top is five now. Why? Because I have five items. So, it's a variable that we are going to use to keep track of the state of the stack and the stack. The stack top is a lot of, lot of uh, indexes you have. The amount of items you have. I would say index. Why? Because the index will start from zero. Yeah. When the index is zero, the stack top is one. Because this is a representation. So every we know that the index always starts from zero. Yeah, but it's yes, but still the amount of even even if it's zero, it's still five. Yeah. So let's see the algorithm, if no question. I'll wait for a few seconds. Uh, if any question. Okay, let's keep going there. So first of all, the pop means I'll check if the stack is empty. Okay, then if it's not, if it's empty, then we have to throw exception. So let me say throw exception uh, or Java exception if it's empty. If it's empty. So if it's not empty, who can tell us what to be the algorithm just by looking at it? I want to take this out. So what I should do, I'll do two things. I want to take four out, so what I should do? Right now the start top is what, five? The fifth position, so what I should do? First thing I'll do, I'll decrement the top. Decrement the top by one, the start top. So when I decrement the start top by one, it means it will move from five to what? to four, but we still have the value here. So I'm going to assign no, assign no to the top of the stack, whatever the element is. I'll just write top of the stack. So when I assign no, then what will happen? This will be deleted. Very, very straightforward and I think easy. Check if the stack is empty. Throw an exception if it's empty. We can pop an empty stack. Otherwise, otherwise, decrement the stack top by one. I should write decrement by one the stack top. And then assign no to the top of the stack. So that's the pop. Now what is push? Push means I'm going to assign the new First of all, we have to check if the, we have space. Check if there's a space. We have to check if there's a space. Okay, if there's a space, then what we should do? Assign new element to the top. So we are going to have a new element or add a new element to the start. And the only way we can add a new element, we have to also increment the start top to five. So this time, I'm going to increment the stack top instead of decrement. So I'm going to again increment it. So those are the algorithm. Again, pop means check if it's empty. If it's not empty, then what? Decrement the stack top to move it one. Then assign new to the top to delete it. Push means what? Assign new item to the stack object. This will be an object, stack object. So let's assign new item. And since I assign new item, the stack top is four. I have to increment it to five. So that's again two step. New element to the stack object. New element to the stack object, then also increment the stack top. Then the last one is the pick. Pick is very strict. Actually, pick is the same as but we are not going to decrement the stack top. Don't decrement it, don't assign no. 
So pick means just return the stack top, that's it. Or first of all, check if it's not empty. Check if it's not empty. If it's not empty, then again, just return the stack top. Return the stack top. So those are the stack operations, uh, the code of algorithm, the steps. Now let's go through the code here. So here we have the stack class. Uh, this is a array implementation, so this is the size of the array. So, so the mass stack size will tell it if it's 100, that means the array size is 100. Then the most important variable we need is the stack top. And we create an array named list. The data type is T, which is the generic. So when we create an object stack in the main method, we can use any data type. So I don't want to put int here or float or something, because otherwise when we create the stack object, in the main method, we have to make sure it's only int or flow. So T means it can be any data type. So that's just a generic style. And actually, we are going to talk about this data type in chapter 30, end of chapter 30. So the first thing we have is, is a constructor. Why this is a constructor? The same name as a class. Doesn't have any returning value expected, no void nothing. So this is our default constructor. When we call this constructor, we are going to create an empty stack. Oh, we can have a I start with a parameter, which means we can set the parameter to any size of stack we want. Then we have the method to initialize the stack. We have the method to check if it's empty stack. Uh, if the stack we have space, we should push an item. We should pick an item, or we should remove an item pop. So we'll wait for a few seconds if it's okay. We still keep going. Please ask a question if you have a question. If not, then let's keep going then. So this is an example from the slides. Uh, here they create a stack and it's okay. They just set the size to 100. So we can see the array from 0 to 99 is 100. And they push four items inside. So this means the index is from 0 to 3. And the stack top should be what? Should be 4. Since the index is from 0 to 99, the array size is 100. And the name of the array is called list. So this is a very nice typical example of a stack object. Array implementation, so we have to specify the size of the array. We have to have the name of the array. And also, we have to know where our stack top is. If it's 0, it means we don't have anything. Minus is four, which means we have four items. Okay, so we we'll go through the code now. The first code is the default constructor. So the default constructor, as we said earlier, we initialize the stack to empty. So the stack top is zero. The size of the array is 100. The array name is list. The data type for now is generic T. So this will create an array stack. The maximum size we can have is 100. And it's also empty of what? The right arm is stack top equal zero. You're saying the stack top is at index zero? Or? Uh, no, we, we said uh, there's, there's nothing in the stack. <coughs> See, if index is zero, it means what? We have one item. So this example here, what are you saying? Like, uh, the 100 array is zero. Is that what you're saying with stack top equal zero? No, no, no. Uh, I will explain here. For example, this is my stack now. This is the index. Right. From zero up. And the stack top is just a special variable that will keep track of the size of the array. So now, if the index is zero, it means what? The stack top is one. It's not empty. So if Start top is zero, it means there is nothing inside. So the oh, default isn't the size of the entire element, it's only the element. Yeah, it is the size of the stack. Array. Yeah. The size of what of the array that hasn't filled in. So yeah, so the this will keep track of the position of the values, the indices. But the start top will tell us how many items we have. So this is a default constructor. We set the start top to zero, which means there's nothing inside. Uh, this is not the index. Index is just the 
yeah. position of the ray. Yes. Just wait for a few seconds while I work this T. Let's okay, so the T is a ge <coughs> excuse me, generic data type. As we said earlier, T, some textbook use T, some textbook use E. The reason, this is an array. The name is list. We can declare an array like this using the keyword new. We know this is what would dynamically allocate memory space. So this is new, array name is list. The data type is T. Mm -hmm. And it will take, we are using the, Object plus and the uh, hundred the mass stack size of the race hundred. So this line creates the array for us with the size of <coughs> two hundred. The name of the race list. The data type right now we don't know the data type. Just a generics. So in the main method you can specify it whether it's eight character or whatever you want. And we exempt you from the final example. You don't ask, you ask a lot of questions which keep me happy. You see that quiet. I don't know if I'm communicating with the world. No, no, I just so, asked no, 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 it's good. But I'm joking, so don't ask too much questions. I'm just joking. I will not accept you for fun. I'm just joking. Otherwise, everybody will ask questions and run away from here. Okay, let's keep going. So, if no question with the, <coughs> excuse me, if no question with the default constructor, you can see initialize stack is the same as default constructor. Why? It means we use the stack a lot of times. And what we want to do? We want to clean everything from the stack. So we set the stack top to zero again. And we make sure that we assign node to all the value inside the stack. So we start from the index zero. We start from index zero to the top, whatever element we have. We set everything to node. And when we set everything to no, we set, we set the stack top to zero also. So we can say initialize stack again is the same as default constructor to initialize the stack to zero. Okay, so the next is check if the stack is empty. It's only one line. If the stack top equal to zero, it means there's nothing inside. So this method will return true if the stack top is zero and it return false if the stack top is not zero. So it, uh, is it checking if it's empty? Yeah, just checking, yeah. So yeah, we are having equal, equal. It's true. Equality. Yeah, so this will return true if the condition here is true. If the condition here is false, I think we all know that equal, equal. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if there's no if statement. No, because we are returning, uh, <coughs> excuse me. If, if I use the if statement here, that means I'm continuing. I just want the answer here, then I return it back to the to the method. We can write the a code like this also. Oh, no. okay. yeah. You can write that. <laughs> for, for example, the, the reason why I will need the if condition here is that I say, okay, if the stack top equal to zero, return then do something. Do yeah, something here. Yeah. Since I don't have to do anything here, I don't need if. If it's for some condition to execute, if it's true, execute. Here, we just want to know if this is true, of course, just return the answer back to the, to the method. This uh, no space also the same thing. Uh, we check if the stack top reach the what the maximum size of the array. If it reach the maximum, that means there's no space. So we, we again we don't use we don't need to use if here. The reason why, if I use if statement, uh, we all did this. If I write if s equal to zero, what I need to do? I have to do something here. If I don't need to do nothing, uh, I don't need to do anything here, then I don't need this. So I will check? just return the true or false. You want to do if s equals equal zero, return true, else return false. Oh, uh, yeah, you can do that too. Uh, well, that's another way. Uh, I get your point. So I can write the code like this. If s equal to zero, return to else return false. But I will say that no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, that, that's correct. That's correct. No, no, that's correct. I didn't know what that, what that was. Yeah. But I will say that if I can write one line of statement to do something yeah, and it will work, okay. there's no need to write three lines to do the same thing. The goal is to reduce the number of but 
Again, it's a very good question, so we understand the concept. So here again, we have only one line. It's going to do something. Otherwise, I can write if this return true, else return false. It will work. But now we have how many lines? Four lines instead of one line. So it's up to you. Baby. Okay, so we saw the algorithm for those three operations. So I think we can see how it's very straightforward. The first algorithm, we say we should check whether they start there's a space, so that's what we are doing here. So now we are using if there's a space, then throw what? Overflow exception. You cannot add anything. Otherwise, do what? Add a new element to the stack top, then increment the stack top. So please make sure you get the code. What's the um, stack overflow exception? The stack overflow exception is when the, there's no space in the stack, so and that? you try to put an item inside. So what is it you're saying if it's if it's if it's full, so the, the stack is full, so a new stack overflow exception. What's the what is your Yeah, the stack overflow exception is that the uh, again we will we'll talk about exception in chapter eleven. But what the exception does is that uh, for example, if I didn't throw this stack overflow exception, what will happen? When I said okay, if the stack is we don't have this condition and the stack is already no space and I had a new item. So if I had a new item to something where there's no space, what will happen? The program will stop. Uh, error. It, 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 a very simple example would be this. If I'm dividing a value, let's say I have a variable name x, and I divide the value by zero, what will happen? This is error. We cannot divide the value by zero. So if I have a program and I have statements here, I'm doing something, then I reach here, and I have something to do here. When I reach here, what will happen? program will stop because this is error. We cannot divide value by zero. It's error. Now, this is what I'm going to do now. I will write if condition here. If this is true, then throw the exception. Whatever exception you have, you throw it. Maybe throw exception not uh, not divide by zero. You should define it. When you throw this exception, what will happen is that when the program reach here, when you see this condition is true, it's going to throw the error away. That's why it's called the code throw. You throw it away. Then you continue okay, writing so the code. You to add more index. No, no, it's not going to add more. But what this will do is that if, the, if this condition is true, it means what? There is no space. Right. Then you don't add new item. Like, no, no, you don't add new item no more. Uh, when, it, uh, when it throw the exception, it will come out of the program because there's no space. There's no space. So what's it throwing out? It's throwing out the error. Overflow exception. Overflow means the stack is, there's no space in the stack. And you try to put an item. So right. you get so, an so error. When you to take the item in, you got to take one out. Right. No, no, we don't take any. Because if you want to take something out, then we have to pop it. But there's no pop operation here. And so what? Are you adding anything? We can't add. Oh, so right. when, when we throw the exception away, we come out of this program, then we continue. We come out of this code and we continue. That's what we have here. You see, push throws stack over for exception. So if this becomes true and we call this, it will come out of the program and then it will continue here. Oh, okay. you can't hide anything. Again, we will see the <coughs> we will see the, the lab work, we will see the code, we will see how it works. Wait for a few seconds. So again, uh, the step is very straightforward. Check, we have space. Okay, if we have space, assign new item to the start top, increment the start top. Now let's go to pick. Pick again, we are not taking anything out. But if the stack is empty, so here yeah, we have underflow. If the stack is empty, there's nothing to pick. Yeah, we don't have. So if the stack is empty, we throw the exception again. This time it's underflow. Otherwise, if there's something inside, just return the top. So you see what they wrote here, start top minus one. Why? Index start from zero. So if the start top is five, index is from zero to four. So we want to re return the position of four. Uh, so start top minus one. So again, the algorithm is here. 
check if the stack is empty. If it's empty, show the session. If it's not empty, we are going to decrement. Oh, no, sorry, this is up. Let's speak. Okay. Check if it's not empty, then return the stack top. Actually, I make a mistake here. Return stack top minus one. Because stack top, if it's five, the index is four. So we return stack top minus one. <coughs> And then this is the pop. Same thing, we want to take something out. So the first thing we have to do, we check if it's not empty. If it's not empty, increment the top, assign no to it. Again, the code is very straight, only three lines. And we can see here, check if the stack is empty. If it's empty, show the exception. If not, increment the top, assign no to the top. So three steps. So we finished with the stack operation, and I'm going to wait for a few seconds for any question. So again, I won't talk too much about this. We have a linear and non-linear. I think I wrote the objective now. In our textbook, chapter 13, the linear data structures or the Java collection. Actually, chapter 13 topic is Java collections. But collection is the same as data structure. So sometimes I may use the term data structure instead of collections, but they all mean the same thing. So in chapter 13, we have both of them. We have the linear and nonlinear. The linear is the stack and queue. Then in our textbook, nonlinear is only two types, which we're going to do the trees and also the graph. Now, when you take a data structure class, there's so many of them. We have a certain map, hash trees, and so many, I won't mention them, but and the whole semester, you are going to study different types of data structures throughout. Here, we are studying only four, which is in chapter 13. So those are the ones in chapter 13 of our course textbook. Uh, we're going to study the stack, which is linear. The queue also is linear. Uh, sorted list is not really a data structure, but here, this is also a data structure. Uh, and also, nonlinear is the trace and graph. Set a map. It's not in this class, uh, so we skip that one. Uh, we will not cover it at all. So only the four we are going to cover. Again, I'll make sure I stay within the textbook. So they give us a stack conceptual view again. Uh, we have a stack, the top. We push an item or pop item from the top. And these are the operations again we went through already, so let me skip this section. And this is what we will go through in our course textbook. Now here we wrote our own code. But in the built-in Java, we have the Java collections for stack. So the name of the class is called stack. You have to import the package name Java Util. Again, the package name. We know this package a lot. We use it a lot. Even if I want to use the scanner class to get an input from keyboard, I use utility package. If I want to get an input from the file system, I use the utility package. Yeah, so it's a very common package we use it. So we have the tree, graph, queue, and stack in the Java utility. So I'll wait for a few seconds if any question. Okay, so let's go through the queue then. Again, I have both uh, slides already here. So we have the, the stack array and the queue array, so let's go. Uh, again, we're going to finish this. I thought we would finish linked list today, but we will keep that one for Thursday. So most likely this Thursday, we are going to do theory. I want to finish all the data structures that we, before we start the, the lab work on it. So this is the queue implementation. Uh, using again the same thing array. Hopefully, after we cover link list, we're going to use stack and queue in link list. And this is also the part of chapter 13. And this will get the word n here. I want to press the space bar and then the end of pressing n. Now it will look at it. So it's part of the chapter 13 concept. So yeah, we'll go through what is a queue. Uh, this will go very fast because if you understand stack, it's the same as Q. The difference is that now we have uh, our entrance and also the exit different now. 
So we saw the stack. Everything is the top. You remove from the top, you put from the top. Q is like going to the bank. Or let's say I go to the supermarket. There's a line. I will join the line from the back. And if you reach my turn and they serve me finish, I'll come out from the front. So I like you. Uh, so we say stack is level, last in, first out. Q will be first in, first out. So if you go in first, and I think the most common operation using the Q in our uh, computer application will be networking. Uh, uh, let's say accessing and network resources. Uh, example here will be printer. Let's use printer, it's more simple. If I send, if we have a network system here, and I send my item first to a printer, another person send an item, my item will be printed first before the next person. So in this case, they use the, this type of data structure for first in, first out. So actually, they gave us the example here. Any waiting line is a queue. A checkout line in the front street. Uh, the car at the stop light, red light. The first one, of course, have to go before the next one, unless you want to overtake. Uh, assembly line in a, in a factory. Uh, you go through the conveyor belt, the first in, first out. So we say queue is the first in, first out. The same thing as a stack. Uh, we say stack, we only take from the top. We can't take from the middle. Q also the same thing. So if I have items here, uh, let's say we have this is full. I can't take, excuse me, I can't take 10. The only way I can take 10 is, oh sorry, 10, 10. Let's say I can't take 100. The only way I can take 100 is when I take this 10 out. I take 7, then I can take 100. So we can't take anything from the middle. Uh, that's the whole concept. In the link list, we should be able to do, and we'll talk about link list, how we can take things from the middle anyway. So this is a queue operation. Uh, this will be our rear, the back. This will be our front. So we take from the front, we come in through the back. And this is the operation we can do. The same as a start, initialize the queue, make sure it's empty. Make sure whether there's a space. But now, in Q, we get more variables. Actually, we're going to get three variables. We say the stack top, in stack, the stack top can tell us how many items we have in the stack. Also, it can tell us the position of the items. In Q, since we are taking an item from the front, front can all, this front will be a variable. It will be a variable in the Q class. But front can only tell us what, what is in the front? What is in the front? I have a variable named back. Back only can tell me what is the back. And both of them cannot tell me how many items we have. So I may have a third variable. Let's say I'll name it count. Or you can name it any name you want to. So what will happen is that when I increment the front, or when I take an item from the front, what will happen? I will increment the count. When I create a new queue with nothing inside, I will assign zero to count. When I increment the rear, I will increment the count. So the count will be a special variable for me that will tell me how many items I have inside the queue. It's okay. Okay, let's keep going. So these are all the operations. And also we can have the queue, how the queue means put it from the rear, delete the queue means take it from the front. So these are all the operations. They almost same as start. The only difference is that first in, first out, last in, first out. So with the queue also, we can have those two exceptions, overflow and underflow exception. The reason why we are using the array, the array is static. The array has a fixed size. So it can reach some state that there's no space, or it will reach a state that we don't have anything inside. So we have to do the same exception for the same as stack. Check for overflow and underflow, same thing. So we say the queue front, we keep track of the first element in the queue. The queue rear, which is the variable, we keep track of the last element in the queue. 
And this is an array implementation, so the size of the array will be mass Q size, the same as the stack. So this is a, a good example. We have a queue with three items. The size is 100. So the front will be zero and the back will be two. Who can tell us what to be the problem with Q? Say, I remove, I push, I remove, insert, I remove, insert, and I reach somewhere here. I have, let's say, three items here. But because I remove the set, remove the set, everything here is empty. Everything is empty. And we are here now. One, two, three. This is still the rear. And this will be the front now because there's nothing in the front. But we can't go back. We can't use this. We cannot use it. What, is, what would be the best way now to solve this problem? Please, we have to go through the slides. I posted the slides yesterday. Okay, let's go. So what we have to do, we have to do what we call the circular array. Circular array. So we'll see the next slide here. The solution means to use a circular array. When you put an item, remove, put, remove, what will happen is that in the front, there will be a space. Uh, by the end, to show that there's no space. So we do this. So a circular array means what? It will be shifting. We'll be shifting it. And what is the idea of shifting? We use the model loss operator. Let me see, we can see how it's shifting now. So when we reach here, now, now 90, 98 becomes the front. But instead of 99 as the, the end, no, we shift it. So zero becomes the end. Next time when I insert an item, one, two becomes. So it's like a circle now. And how do we do this? We use the mod loss operator. Uh, we can see the code here. Where is the code? Oh, sorry. It's not yet. So this is the constructor. So the first thing the constructor here, we initialize the size of the array, make sure there's nothing in the queue. The count is zero. There's nothing. The count is zero, the array is 99, or whatever the size is. The initialize means we want to make sure there's nothing in the array. But you can see what we are doing here now. You can see in the for loop, instead of saying i equal to i plus 1, which means it will be what? It will be linear, straight. i equal to i plus 1. Then you move the index 0, 1, 2, 3. No. This time we have i plus 1 modulus the mass q size, which means if we reach 99, what will be the next index? Let's say the size is 100. When we reach 99, what will be the next index? Zero. Zero. Why zero? Because 99 plus one is what? 100. We don't have index 100. The size is 100. We go from zero to 99. But because of this, 100 modulus 100 is what? Zero. So we start all over. All over. So that's the concept here. Okay, please make sure you understand this. Next week, Tuesday, we will surely take a quiz on this concept. So, to check if uh, Q is empty, that's it. We have a special variable named count. So, if count is zero, that means there's nothing. If count reach the maximum uh, index, that means there's no space. And now the next is checking the front. I'll just return the front. This is to know what is in the front. It's like pick, pick. So we can pick what is in the front. But before we check, same thing as pick in stack. We check if the stack is not empty. Here we also check if the queue is not empty. And let's return what is in the front. Also, we can check the back. If the queue is not empty, return what is in the back. And also to add an, uh, items, it's almost the same as a stack. But we're going to hide from both, from the rear. So I have to increment the rear. First of all, I will check if there's, there's a space. So check if the stack is, is full, I mean, sorry, Q, if the Q is full. If it's not, increment the rear by one. Increment the counter, then assign a new element to the rear. So I will increment the rear by one, then I will assign new element to it. And I will increment the counter so that I know how many items I have. So we shouldn't forget that the, the counter, the count is very important. 
tell us that how many elements we have. So first check if the stack is, I mean the queue is full. If it's not, increment the array. Again, this is a circular array. So when we reach 100, we start from zero again, one plus 100. When we reach 101, which we're not going to revive, when we reach 101, it means the index will be one. Then we increment the array. Then the next will be to delete. Delete means what? The front. I delete from the front. In a stack, we delete, we take from the top, we have from the top. So we always deal with the top. Increment the top, increment the top. I hear it's difficult. You can see we have to do what? We have to increment the front. Because if the front is zero here, if I delete this, it will be one now. So when I'm inserting an item, I will do what? I will increment the rear. When I'm removing an item, I will increment the front. It's more or less like a going to the back. I come out from the front, I go through the back. So that's it. I'll wait for a few seconds if there's a question. Okay. okay, so we finish. This is the queue operations. We have the inserting, removing, uh, initialize the queue, and also the constructors, etc. So we will see the ADT here. NQ means to insert an item, DQ means to remove it. Um, first means to see what is in the front. It's empty, check if the queue is empty. Size means the count. We always return the count, how many items we have in the queue. And we have a special method name to string. We had it here. We know to string will represent the string of the object that we want to print if we are using object oriented concept. And again, this is object oriented concept. So incrementing the <coughs> queue with an array, we said the problem again was the, the, the linear problem. So this is just repeating the same concept again. So we have to do it circular, again, using the formula. I intentionally put the slice again, look at the formula here. When we have this, it means we're going round. If I have red equal to red plus one, it means I'm going straight. So when I reach 99, I stop, I can't go anywhere. Uh, with the modulus Q length, it will make me come back to zero, one, and get to the three. And I think this is the end of it. I'll wait for a few seconds if you have any question. If no question, let me put up my video first. <laughs>